Hi, everybody. I'm Phil Fatika, and welcome back. This is the Milkweed Government Channel. It is Channel 9. Thanks for being with us today. Two very special people to uh, interview today and to talk about something which everybody knows uh, something about, and that's multiple sclerosis. Let me introduce you. On your left is Colleen Zim Zimzak. Mm -hmm. I got it right? Mm -hmm. Colleen Zimzak. She is the development manager for the local chapter of the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. Yes, it's a mouthful. Yes, it is. <laughs> you raise the money. I do. And the woman that spends the money is sitting next to her. This is Mary Lee Jackson. Is that correct? I feel, yes. Okay, nice to see you. Let's talk about, first of all, real basics. What is multiple sclerosis? What, w w how does it manifest itself? You know, well, first of all, one. what is it? It's a, basically a disease of the central nervous system mm -hmm. affecting the brain and the spinal cord. And it's an autoimmune disease, so which means the body attacks itself. Mm -hmm. With MS, the body attacks the myelin sheath that is the protective layer over the nerve fibers in your brain and your spinal cord. So it attacks this myelin sheath and it wears it away and that interrupts the nerve signals you know, to various parts of the body. And um, it's that's, progressive? Um, it, it can it is be. A pro yes, it can be. Mm -hmm. But the, the wearing away of this myelin sheath on the nerve fibers, that's what leads to lesions or plaques in the brain and spinal cord. Mm -hmm. That's what shows up on the MRI. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the um, basic diagnostic tools you know, to diagnose yeah, the yeah. disease is the MRI. If um, uh, you have it, would your children necessarily have it or your grandfather? Not, not necessarily. Not, not I mean, okay. they, they say it's, there may be genetic factors, mm -hmm. um, you know, with this disease. Um, I know a grandmother, her daughter and her daughter, you know, but then I, I know isolated mm -hmm. um, cases where, you know, just one person in a family has it. So it's a combination of, um, it could be genetics, environmental, um, you know, maybe a stressful event may trigger, you know, they don't know. They really don't know the cause. It, does it have a, an age that it falls within more so than another age group? Well, yes, it does. It's mostly adults um, between 20 and 50 years old. Mm. Oh, right, really? Right in the prime right of their lives, yeah. When okay. they're starting to raise a family, when mm. they're, you know, their career's just taking off. Um, yes, that's when it's... Um, mm. You know, that's so yeah. why it's so devastating because it's just um, right out of the blue. Pauline, is there anything that can be used to lessen the symptoms? Uh, is there anything that can be used to There's even stop the sy symptoms? There's several medications. It, it depends on the people, the person, or the, the situation with right. the MS. Okay. And, and the type of MS that they have, right. too. There are yeah. different There's kinds. There's about types. four categories, mm -hmm. yeah. And most of the treatments are designed for the relapse-remitting type of MS, mm -hmm. where you, you know, have a flare-up or an exacerbation. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, over time, it, it'll go away. It may come back, may not. So it does it... Um, little research does it also affect perhaps your speech it can it can yes mm -hmm. and and walking it can it can again yes uh, every every course of MS everyone's MS is different mm -hmm. I always say there's there's no rhyme or reason to the mm -hmm. disease and I think there's a lot of stereotypes out there that people think well it doesn't look like there's anything wrong with you right. or but you're you not in a wheelchair so that right. how can you have MS there's mm -hmm. just so many different severities and just even there's, I don't know, I mean, I don't know the statistics with pediatric cases. There's yes, some that there's are, more even kids, I mean, yes. it's, but that's it's a 20 to 50 mm -hmm. age range, but that's it is, is the norm. it's so that's different with everybody. Yeah. It, it is. is. It's okay. Um, again, there's, it, it's such a broad topic to, to comment on, yeah. and because uh, is the identification of it today better? That's why we can help quicker, or are more people getting it? I don't know if that's the correct terminology or not. I know. Um, um, definitely the diagnostic tools are better than, you know, even mm -hmm. 20 years ago, the MRI wasn't, you know, even well, around. But yeah, if, if, they, if it wasn't around, what did they say was wrong with you? <laughs> um, without the MRI, mm -hmm. they had their ways. I mean, way back in the 50s and 60s, they would Don't, put... It's not too far back for some of us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they would put people in a... Um, a hot tub, even mm -hmm. the hot water. Heat is 
um, horrible for MS for most people then again you know okay. yeah. it doesn't mean everybody and if they came out you know totally fatigued out of the tub that was an indicator okay. and then along with their symptoms too they were able you know to make a diagnosis okay so how does the local branch or the Western Pennsylvania Erie branch operate you help people who have been diagnosed you yes. raise money to fight it um, you need volunteers, you need people to attend fundraisers, all the above. Mm -hmm. yes. um, um, <laughs> it's a little bit of everything. Fire away. Go we ahead. We have our main office. We're actually we're a branch of the, the Western Pennsylvania mm -hmm. chapter. So our big, our hub, if mm -hmm. you will, is mm -hmm. in Pittsburgh. Yeah. And then we also have an office in Altoona. So we're, and what we do is we encompass a 26 county region in northwestern, southern Pennsylvania. So there's 26 counties. And within the 26 counties, we service right now, I think our most updated number is about 7,500 people. Okay. Mm -hmm. And those are people that are just registered. Is with that a us. number that's constant? Constantly it changing. Rise? It's it is constantly changing. Goes mm -hmm. up, goes down? It's been Re going up. up. It's been going up. Yes. Is there oh, research to indicate why? You mentioned I something about stress. I, I um, stress can aggravate related. MS. There's really no diehard research, you know, connecting mm -hmm. stress and um, MS and the start of MS. Mm -hmm. But I think anybody that has MS will agree stress can be, and yeah. you know, aggravating to the symptoms. Aggra yeah. yeah. I, I don't know any, any other way to make this. A, a question. Uh, it's an indelicate question, and forgive me. That's okay. Can you pass away from it? I, is it a, is it something that would it, it they itself say you know? Don't die, you don't die from MS, so to speak, mm -hmm. but um, you know maybe you will have um, pneumonia because Cause, you were yeah. mm -hmm. you know bed bound. Okay. But technically, no, you do That's not die from MS. Complications mm -hmm. of. I'll kind of think of all of the. Yeah. I don't know, but the diseases that are out there, the people are familiar with this. They, they've heard this term before. And I've noticed the, mag the brochure that you've brought along about facts, who gets it, how many people have it, et cetera. Mm -hmm. This would be available oh, through you people definitely. to get this? Mm -hmm. Yes. And how would I seek treatment? I mean, I've, I've been told that X, I, I've been suspicious of something, and would the doctor I am assuming a doctor, a neurologist, a neurologist yes. would be to make the diagnosis and send me to you, and then you could do what for me? <laughs> well, we could. Um, I would explain what our programs and services mm -hmm. are, and those. Um, I'm I'm happy when a neurologist gives um, our client, you know, our our number. Mm -hmm. I think that's important to be hooked up with us, um, just so. We don't want anyone to feel alone out there. There's way too much support out there. Okay. We have support groups every month. We have um, we have eight counties in our Erie branch here, and we probably have six of the counties covered with support groups. Okay. So, know. in a sense, you'd like volunteers definitely to help. And oh. what would they what would they help do? It depends. We have a lot of people watching who would find this in fascinating and they want to help you how, do what? Well, we're, I mean, it's just in, in our Erie office, it's just the two of us. Yes. Um, but we do, we always have events, mm -hmm. events where, I mean, it, it, as far as the fundraising and mm -hmm. planning and things like that, where I need volunteers for different aspects of the events, we'll say walk. Mm -hmm. We have a walk every spring where I'm looking for oodles and oodles of volunteers <laughs> to come help with anything from stuffing envelopes to bagging peanuts for a ball game, which is Friday, uh, you know, or to making <laughs> phone calls. So we're always looking for volunteers. Mm -hmm. And I know Mary Lee has different projects too, from a program's perspective, where she's looking for volunteers yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. The um, this ain't a ch this is not cheap. Where does the money come from? How do you handle this? I mean. Who gives you the money? Uh, are you funded through whom? And, and we would rely. How, would you like a lot more? <laughs> of course. <laughs> we rely. We, always do. Yeah. <laughs> we rely entirely on donations. Okay. You know, I do some grant writing for our programs, mm -hmm. but um, it's basically donations. Mm -hmm. You know, it's. Okay, so that's a tough road sometimes. Yeah. So I think especially during these economic times. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, people's yeah. tendency to give. 
isn't there anymore. But I tell you, we've been people. doing well. I mean, our Eerie, we are surrounded. Eerie is generous. Good. Very generous. Good. They that's really, really nice to hear. They really are. Yeah, that's yeah. really nice to hear. And it, we're definitely mm -hmm. firm believers in, and I know Mary Lee attests to this as well, whether it's $5 or $100, every little bit counts. Yep. I mean, it's from a, from a fundraising perspective. So it adds up, and it's we've been, it we, we've been maintaining. And mm -hmm. I'm reading here, and there's... Um, the brochure you have, it's called Multiple Sclerosis, Just the Facts, and one of them says that the National Multiple Sclerosis Society is committed to a world free of MS, advancing research that will stop the progression, and et cetera, et cetera. Would it be safe to say that um, we, aren't, we don't have as much MS here as other countries do? Um, does, per does capita, the farther north you go, the more prevalent the disease is. So Norway, Finland, Canada, yeah, they're higher. Really? Yes. Around the equator, mm -hmm. it's very low. That's certainly, <laughs> it's, to a researcher, I that's know. certainly very telling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be lifestyle, environment. Geography, um, yeah. They uh, don't know yet? If, mm -mm. I think if we knew, it, we'd be we'd way all closer. Move south. We'd all go to the Bahamas, <laughs> I yeah, think. Yeah, we'd all move south. <laughs> well, yeah. I think we'd be closer to a cure, too. Yes, if exactly. We knew yeah. yeah, that's the world free of MS. Um, it's this, is this um, a new disease? Um, is it uh, been around for quite some time? Oh, it's been around definitely. Just a not long quite time. diagnosed 100 years ago, 200 years ago. Not quite sure what it was. Um, no, it's been around for a long I'm just thinking the National MS Society, I think, was formed in what, like around in the 40s? Yeah, okay. 48 or okay. something like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. yeah. But no, MS has been around for. I don't even want to. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't mean. To, I, I don't know. Yeah, it's been around for. Know. It's it's it's, it's long time, some, yeah. some somewhat like um, um, a cancer, which was perhaps just not being able to be diagnosed correctly. Yeah. Uh, but um, when you look for a disease, you look for perhaps um, polio, which uh, in the was it the fifties or fifties when the Salk vaccine came out, mm -hmm. which pretty much. Um, could put a stop to that dreaded disease. Yeah. Is the research from the national people indicating that they're on the trail of that? Is there something that Will says we may be able to stop it? Stop it. There's always research um, going on out there. Um, as far as stopping the disease, all we've been able to come up with so far is slowing the progression down, lessening the severity of the exacerbations, mm -hmm. maybe even lessening the number of lesions that can occur. That's what the treatments are designed for now. Um, I think one of the interesting um, research, um, I don't know, the, one of the topics is um, it's a hormone that women have when they're pregnant. Mm -hmm. And when women are pregnant, and this is just you know generalized, it doesn't mean everyone, mm -hmm. they are symptom free during their pregnancy. There are no MS symptoms. And then, wow. you know, and then once the baby's born, you know, the disease, uh, you know, may become active again, may not, it just depends. But so there's these certain hormones during pregnancy, and so they're doing research on that, you know, is, is there a key there? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's... It's a moving target. It's, yeah, it's very <laughs> hard to say here. 